First this evening, the train crash south of Sydney that's left a $5 million damages bill and prompted comparisons with the Granville train disaster. Fortunately this time, the crash involved empty trains and no one was hurt. Local police patrols, city rail troubleshooters and firemen rushed to Waterfall Station just after 4am. They found themselves staring at a grotesque mass of torn and twisted metal that minutes earlier had been four million dollar carriages on two trains. First report said only the driver and guard had been on each of them, but senior police with the Granville disaster in mind ordered an immediate check of all carriages to make sure they were empty. The two-man crews on each train were breath tested to confirm they'd not been drinking, and as dawn broke, engineers and sightseers could gauge the extent of the damage. I don't live on the corner over there and I get up at 4.30 and I still didn't hear nothing, I, nothing at all. Noise, noise, only oh noise. Boom, boom, boom. In addition to the tangled mess of metal on the track, a 15 metre section of concrete walkway was punched out. It flew through the air to finish on the western side of the station. A long crack ran through the platform where it was pushed out of alignment and station fittings were a write-off. An eight-carriage train about to leave for Sydney was stationary at Waterfall when the accident happened. The driver of the second train had just left an overnight siding and was reversing on the same track to take its place. His guard was giving him shunting instructions using a system of bells, but it's thought they were drowned out by a passing locomotive. The driver kept reversing, thinking the other train had departed, but instead slammed into it. There appears to have been some problem in communication between the driver and the guard. Riding an eight-carriage train with an all-up weight close to 300 tonnes, the guard made a split-second decision that saved his life. He jumped onto the tracks and kept running as several carriages jackknifed into the air behind him. City Rail says the second train should have left the siding at less than 15 kilometres an hour and reversed at slow speed toward the station. When we end up with a, a collision like this, obviously there's been a failure somewhere. The McKell Avenue Railway Bridge underwent safety checks after the accident. One of the carriages jackknifed toward brick supports but fortunately didn't flatten them. At Granville 17 years ago, 83 people died when the 609 from the Blue Mountains jumped the track and knocked out stanchions, bringing down the bridge there. Ten hours after it happened, emergency crews were still working to free the dead and injured. A fleet of ambulances ferried the victims to four local hospitals, and surgical teams entered the wreckage to save people trapped in their seats. Buses were used today to ferry commuters to their destinations. It's really lucky that there's no one on it. So, I mean, it could have been us that were, that were on the next train coming through. I know, unbelievable how it's done. The walkway's completely gone now. Repair crews had one line open by lunchtime, so trains heading north and south could in turn use it. City Rail hopes the other track will be ready for tomorrow's morning peak, but commuters will be bussed round the battered station till it's repaired. Officials say it's lucky the accident happened so early. Dozens of trains follow the same procedure each day, in the build-up to the morning peak. Harry Potter, 10 News. Ross Simon. A spectacular train crash strands Sydney commuters. Good evening. Human error appears to be the cause of a multi-million dollar train crash south of Sydney. Four carriages were severely damaged and a footbridge destroyed when a commuter train rammed into the back of another. Miraculously, no one was injured. Crash happened just after four this morning when eight stationary carriages were shunted by a second train being moved into position for a routine run to Sydney. The sheer weight of the 200 ton train had a concertina effect pushing two of the carriages up and into a footbridge linking the island platform with the street. There were no passengers aboard, just the two drivers and a guard on each train. Police say human error seems the most likely cause. There appears to have been some problem in communication between the driver and the guard. The exact cause of that, who was on the train, what speed that it's travelling and so forth, is certainly the subject of our investigation. The guard has jumped from the uh, carriage in which he was travelling just before the collision and scrambled clear. A fleet of buses was waiting by the time commuters arrived. It's the most amount of damage caused to a state rail passenger train since the Granville disaster and police are in no doubt that the loss of human life would have been on a similar scale if this crash had happened just two hours later. By midday, one of the tracks was reopened but the other could be closed for up to 48 hours. Adam Malters, 7 Nightly News. When we end up with a, a collision like this, obviously there's been a failure somewhere.
This morning, buses replaced the busy Illawarra line. By mid-afternoon, a limited service resumed. It's likely to be another day before both tracks are open. Damien Ryan.